Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal. I know a lot of you out there are mothers, or maybe you have, well, everybody has a mother. So if you have been a mother, you have a mother, you wanna be a mother, well, today we're gonna talk about motherhood. But in what way? I know there's vast amounts of areas and it's just like, oh God, yeah, what's, what's so interesting about talking about moms? Well, maybe and maybe not. Today we are gonna come here and talk about that. In fact, we have a mom here and we're gonna be joined by another mom later to talk about what it means to be a mom today and why it seems to be a little bit harder than it used to be before. I mean, ironically, with the technology and the conveniences of today's society, why? Why is it harder now? Let's hear it from the moms. So welcome to our show. So I'm gonna introduce our first guest today, Deva Key. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. Okay, Deva Key uh, Goodman. Yes. Is that your full Goodman name? Robinson. Robinson Goodman. My full name is Srimanti Deva Kiyasi, a Mayflower Goodman Robinson, but Deva Key is just fine. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. It says a lot about you already. And your little one, let's right here. This is Janice too. This is Camuel. Camuel, what yeah. an interesting name. Camuel Skywise J. Freeman. We like a lot of names. Uh huh, right. Okay. Well, that's great because there's a lot to talk about today. And there are lots of hats we wear as women today. Yes? Yeah. So let's refer back to your involvement with the Fringe Festival a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, there was a piece that I unfortunately missed about motherhood which I heard was outrageously, amazingly stimulating. Let's hear a little bit about it and your involvement with it. So my part in the show was doing a co-monologue about giving birth. And the point of the, the particular co-monologue, the other mom was talking about her birth story in the hospital versus my birth story in the, um, in the home. I had a home birth. Oh, wow. Yes. Not in the bathtub or anything, just like a, Okay, yeah. Um, just a regular birth. You had somebody come in and you did that on the bed? Did you have it on, or on the, did you squat? Yeah, <laughs> squat, Really? Yes. You did that type of birth? Cool. Mm -hmm. It was very awesome and I would hope to, well, I'd like to have another and I would do it the same way. Oh, why? I Ooh. just like being it. <laughs> you funny. Really you, should, you know what you're doing on air, don't you? Yeah. Is he like that at home? All the time. It's the, is it the, I don't want to say terrible too, but it's it that rebellious too that, that just defies everything and knows how to get the attention. Yes. Yes. He just turned two. Excellent. Oh, it's <laughs> the said. Okay. So, um, but this is brilliant because this is exactly what we moms have to deal with. And a lot of people don't, who don't have kids or don't have the patience or forget what it's like to be a mom or to have kids around, they go, oh God, just take them away, you know? And it's, it's that multitasking. It's the, the fact that we don't know what's going to happen next and how we have to deal with that. Yes. It is one of the biggest challenges <laughs> is, is having... What are we going to do with that? Yeah, having him in places that aren't designed to have small children yeah. is a really big challenge, even if it's just a friend's home who doesn't have kids. Right. Uh-oh, are you going to do that? Are you going to pour it over that? Go on. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with it when you were doing rehearsing for the play? How did you deal with it? Did you have your baby with you? Well, it was all mom, so we all brought babies. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. beautiful. In fact, I saw one show, it was a dance piece, where they brought a baby into the dance performance, which was beautiful. Yes. Yeah. It was yes. really, really nice. Yay. Yeah. Um, so do you think, do you agree with my opening premise that um, moms today do have it harder than before? I do agree. Why? Because the lifestyle and culture of our modern society yeah. is more focused on nuclear families. And I think perhaps that's different for a lot of people in Hawaii, but not for me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have much family that's close, and I think they would step in and help out in ways that people who aren't actually related to me don't. I think that's a very good point. I mean, it's kind of, it's just so crazy that the more modern and contemporary we are, the more we're just consumed with our own small little lives. And the old concept of a village and, and having relatives and sisters and brothers and everyone around to help out is kind of a lost art. If I had a nickel for every time <laughs> I wished for a village. Where is your family now? Most of them are, well, they're kind of spread out. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, Big exactly. Island, California, Ohio. Yeah. yeah, but even if they were together, you know, there's not that whole family unity yeah. as it used to be. Without them actually living on the same property, right? it's 
it, they'd be caught up in their lives and I, but I think they would still be more available for yeah. you know like to have if that my mom was here just yeah. to have a sitter once in a while more often than you know otherwise do you have a good relationship with your mom I think so it's 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 somewhere in the middle do you think that having had your child, it affected your relationship with your mom? Like, did you see her in a different light and you st you gained a new respect for her? Absolutely. Okay. And also for her love for me. Right. Because thinking about how I love him and thinking, oh my God, my mom feels that way about me. As yeah. she said, she still does. And so it's like, wow, she loves me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you cannot feel that way until you actually have your own. Mm -hmm. And it, it never goes away. This motherhood concept, think, I mean, it's hard for you to foreshadow 20 years from now because you like can't even get out of today's, you know, mess. But oh, by water. Um, but you know, when he becomes an adult and he has a child and your relationship with him at that time, you know, can you even fathom that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so muddled in today's mess or chaos in his world that you cannot even think of other things that you want to do right now? Most of the time, I, I make thinking about what I need a priority because no one else will. You, have, you sound like you really don't have any help or support. Why? Oh, that's, oh no. His dad is really, really helpful and supportive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. But so is it? I work three days a week and he works the other four and we trade oh, wow. off. Yeah. Wow. So this lucky guy gets to be with one of us every day. Yeah. Well, I mean, that there's a trade off, right? I mean, the people who do work and, and want to have put their little kitties in daycare. And what does that do with the relationship? Because you mentioned in your email of how it affects, you said that even your, the stress you have sometimes affects how you feed him or, or how he senses your yes, stress. Yes, he can absolutely feel if I'm rushed and impatient. Come here, honey. Come Come on. Put your car up here. Yeah. Do you want to sit on the other leg? Or do you want to have some water? Uh, look, 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 see? See, you always have to one. have that. Um, yeah, so how do you feel about these distractions <laughs> in your life? <laughs> Sometimes it's really, really it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. But it really, it just really challenges me to. Have you ever lost it in a way that you feel like it's just, oh my God, I, why, why be a mother? A couple times. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. And what do you usually do to kind of regain yourself? It do takes you have, a little bit. Do you have an outlet? Do you have something that you can do where any moms out there are looking at you and looking at your beautiful child going, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> you know, what? just. But he's so cute. I can't <laughs> right. every, yeah. everything. <laughs> Uh, nothing pops to mind, it's just kind of in the moment. Well, you seem pretty chilled. Yeah. So you must have ways to channel. Like if there are tips for moms out there who really lose it all the time because they don't have the patience to deal with a toddler who's going to defy every single thing, what do you do? I make an attempt to meditate daily. Ah, see? Okay. Yes. That's it. That is why you are so zen. You do. You have a very calm energy. Even if it's as I'm lying in bed falling asleep. Whoa! <laughs> it was bound to happen. As that water spilled all over your lap. Okay, there you go. So you're saying you do meditation before you go to sleep, not when you wake yeah. up? Uh, well, I'm challenged with waking up earlier. Oh, that's another thing. So sleep-deprived moms. All right, that's a huge topic there. How do you deal with that? I mean, just interrupt. Does he sleep with you? Does he wake up he in does. the middle of night? He does. He sleeps with me. He still wakes up. Um, he's still nursing. Oh, wow, yeah. okay. What's the, you know, breast milk, how does stress affect breast milk? Do you think there's a correlation? I, um, I probably looked it up, but if I remember correctly, though, some of those stress hormones do get into the milk. They do, don't they? Yes. Wow. So it's not good. No, no. So that's why the meditation and you need the rest. I mean, there's just so many things. Like I never had enough breast milk and my mom would blame me because for, for running around too much and being too active because you're supposed to sit and be still and let your body do what it's supposed to do. Yes. But there's no way you can do that. No. I, well, really what I wonder about is moms who have more than one child. Uh-huh. Like how do they do it? Yeah, or yeah. like twins. How do you breastfeed both of them? Or you, maybe that's more convenient. 
I don't know. My sister has twins. It doesn't sound more convenient. Yeah. It sounds less convenient. Well, okay, so maybe I can vouch for myself is that once you have more than one, you start juggling things, and by the time you have number three, you don't care. You're just like, whatever. I don't want to know. Okay. So that's the trick. Just don't <laughs> care about anything. That's ah, right. Cereal on the floor. Let it be. Yeah. So first one, you go, oh, you're not allowed to do that. You can't have candy, blah, blah, blah. Second one, the older one's going to give it to the second one anyway. So it's oh. like, okay. Third one, screw it. Just let them do. Just don't tell me. Just let me sleep. You know, it's kind of funny. So it's a default plan. Like you just kind of like, forget. You just don't want to deal with it. I don't know. I mean, right now you're you're consumed by yes. this one because it's your only child. Yes. But then when you have to juggle a little bit more, you might be putting your efforts in different ways. Right. Ah, and what about your life? I mean, how do you feel like that's taken away from your work or what you want to do as a woman? Oh, I, all I had to do was give up my, you know, my personal freedom and my personal desires. That's all. Oh. Yeah. So you just, as a mom, just expect to prepare to have no life, then you're fine. For a while. What's a while? Well, it's two years and counting. Okay. It's not 100% nope. giving up everything, but it's a lot. And I think you divide it into different phases. So we're talking toddler phase, or the first five, six years of a child's life. You really need to be there for them. And then when they're in school, you don't have to do as much. But again, for me, being a mother of teenage kids now, it's almost worse now psychologically. OK. I feel like, OK, I don't have to clean up after their mess, but there's more mess in here. And I'm just warning well, you. I'm <laughs> glad you're warning me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different kind of mess. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying motherhood is just unending. Okay. But there's a beauty of it, right? And uh, so, but ultimately, I find that all of those sacrifices are worth it because the fulfillment I get from motherhood yes. is far outweighs it. Absolutely. And so that continues throughout the different stages. Yes. That's what it sounds like. Abs no, no doubt. I mean, we're going to end on that high note because it is. I mean, why are we talking about it? Because there's so much to be blessed by, but we need to kind of break it down into why it's like that. And look, see, you've got to deal with stuff like that. All right, so quick, quick break. Go pee. Go, go pee. <laughs> and we'll be back and we'll talk. OK, we have diaper. We're going to chill out and talk again about motherhood. Hello, huh? How you doing? It's me, Angus McTech, wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy, every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to see you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Back to Quok Talk. It's a little crazy here because we got a little toddler, which is normal for any family because, hey, you can't just say, all right, I'm just going to focus now and leave something to kind of wander. Because as mothers, you don't. You never put anything down 100%. You're always constantly juggling things that are around you. And, and when shit hits the fan, you just got to deal with it, right? You can't just say, I'm going to go to work now. I'm going to go to sleep. No shutting off, right? Devaki, hear me with me. Um, continuing our talk about motherhood and, and the crazy 
stuff we have to deal with. I want to just talk a little bit about a social issue. Um, I just read a disturbing news article uh, this morning that in Arkansas, they passed a new law that husbands can sue their wives for abortions. Now, it's just kind of a little bit crazy, but I don't know what your stance is on abortion to begin with. They're specifically talking about this, I can't even say it without cringing, it's called dismemberment abortion, which means an abortion in the second trimester, I think. Second. Yeah. Wow. I know, so that's pretty gruesome. But yes. the, the fact that they have these laws, and then going back to how we women believe that we own our bodies and we should have our own choices and how we deal with it, what do you feel about that? And where things are going now in terms of women empowerment and whether this is a step forward or backwards to it. I disagree with that law. Me too. Yes. Um, I mean, details it could, might not have been a mutual choice to attempt to have a pregnancy. Right, right. And it's definitely not going to help the marital relationship to have a lot <laughs> <Yeah, think>? of <laughs> Yeah. And I also think that being mentally wanting to have a child makes it way, way better because of all of those sacrifices. Right. And I can, I mean, I'm not going to mention anyone in particular, but I know a person who had a kid and didn't, and they did it because of family pressure to do so. Uh -huh. And You was, mean an abortion? No, no, they, oh, had, to have they the baby. had the baby and it was their second <laughs> child and sh the woman didn't want to have the baby and it's like, Oh, right. And unto teenagehood, oh, she no, was not, right. yeah, there was still like a, I don't know, poor kid. Yeah, yeah, and people don't think about, well, people don't talk about these things, because they just assume, all right, you got in yourself in that mess, and so you just deal with it. Um, there's another kind of more absurd news article. I mean, this oh, was, I don't know, second trimester. I know, it's, it's kind of brutal. To, but un unless there were some physical reasons, some, some right. right? Obviously, there wouldn't be just, just because she decided then to, to right. end it. I, I don't agree either. But um, there's another um, suing case, which was uh, in China. This was a few years ago, but it, it hit world news because this husband sued his wife because, get this, after she had her baby, um, her the, the wife is gorgeous, and the baby came out ugly. Did you hear about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> so he sued her because the baby didn't look like her, and apparently it's because she had all this plastic surgery that it was not real, her face. So I don't know. Does he have a right to sue her for deceiving him? <laughs> I want to say no. Oh, God. Zuri, what do you think? You've heard of this case, right? <laughs> I feel so bad for the kid. I really do. Because now the kid knows that the dad is like, oh, you're so ugly. <laughs> but the mom was ugly. She should have let the dad know. I think he was right. I'm sorry. Wait, so you're oh. saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're saying that when you have a partner, yes. you have to kind of disclose everything about you? I think so. You know, I think it's really important to be honest about who you are, especially if it will directly affect the life of another. Yes, or if it's going to affect the life of another. Yeah. But that's a bit more, I don't know. I think horrible. A, I mean, I don't think that sh suing somebody for that. I don't know. Yeah. It's just kind of like, so you don't love her for her true self. It's the opposite of Beauty and the Beast, right? It's like, she really was ugly, I according guess. to him. Oh, uh. <laughs> she wasn't expecting true love. Oh. oh, that's another thing, though. People marry for the wrong reasons, right? Uh, or have babies for the wrong reasons. Yes. Let's do it that way. Well, thanks, Zuri, for that. I just think it's kind of like, today, our, our concept of marriage and babies is a little different from the old days. It was much more simple then. And you had the village, right? You had people to support you, and it was everything. Yes. Was I'm not sure when that was, but <laughs> at some point, going yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. And you can afford to have a dozen kids because you have the village to help. So now you only have like one or two because it's already overwhelming and it's too expensive, right? Yep. Yeah. So um, what would you say, you know, did you see that movie, The Bad Mom? Uh, it was recent. Uh, what's Bad Mom? Bad Mom. Yes, I did. Okay. So did you, I mean, in a, in, in a nutshell, it's about these moms who decide to just throw it up and say, screw this. We're going to not take care of our kids. You guys take yourselves. I'm not going to make breakfast for you, blah, blah, blah. Do you see that, did, did you identify with those feelings, even though their kids were a little bit older? I could understand where they were coming from. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yes. do you feel there's any 
need to do that sometimes? Yes. Have you just said, take him, I'm not gonna? Um, yep, absolutely. Ah. So I can't deal with him right now. Uh, I, yeah, it's happened a few times. Yeah, but that's normal, right? Yeah. And that's good. I think so. It's, and it's, it's also good for your partner to know that you don't need to have them 24 7. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm in a lucky, unique position where my partner does have him. Yeah. Um, three days a week for most of the day. Right. So I feel like there is a lot more understanding on his end about what it's actually like to have him for hours and hours on end. Yeah. And yeah. That it's just, it's fun, it's great, it's amazing, but it's also very amazing. tiring. To he constantly. said amazing. That's amazing. Oh. Wow. How about that? Yeah, see little things like that, just like the little touches. We're talking about the blessings, right? Yeah. Just those little, little things, they, all, they come all the time. And that's what is amazing. I mean, we're talking about all the, the pain that we have to deal with and trying to get them to not spill all over the table, but at the same time, it's amazing, this birth thing. So what are some things that you would suggest or what do you see as the best things of motherhood that bring to you, not just joy and fulfillment, but bigger things, like your perspective on life and all that? It, having Camuel has definitely been the biggest catalyst to my own personal growth and development because I want the best for him and I know I need to be my best self to provide that. And um, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to stress myself out and, and become this perfect person, but to just be, to more focus on balance in my life. And, and um, I think it's been really good for me to have to focus on someone else more. Ah, good point. Well, and then I was gonna bring up um, your relationship with your partner. How has a child affected your relationship? Obviously, I, I did a topic recently about how, you know, sex when you have young kids is gonna basically be thrown out the door. I was really amazed how many new parents don't sleep in the same bed. And I didn't find yeah. out until we had one, but it's like most so of you don't? The, no. Oh. And, and, it, and like most of my friends who have young children don't sleep in the same bed. So very interesting. Yeah. But is it the guy's choice or your choice? It's a mutual choice. Okay. Yep. I sleep with him. He sleeps with the dog. <laughs> Okay. Well, all right. So, how do you, how long do you think that's going to last for? Whether that's going to, how that's going to change things? I don't know. But does that until we get a bigger bed? Okay. Okay. Or until he gets his own bed? Yes. But how does that put that relationship on on you too? If you don't have that inti intimacy at night or whenever, how does it affect your communication or the level of communication? Do you feel like something? Yes, because that would normally be the time when I would chat his ear off about right. my day. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's definitely been challenging. Yeah, that's hard. There's um, more times than I feel comfortable with feeling distant. Um, and it's, it's it, and there's ups and downs with it. There's times when it's better, yeah. better and times when it, it's <laughs> more combination. Like if he's feeling stressed about work and then there's these other things going on too, then it, then it just ah, amplifies yes, yes. that sense. And do you feel like conversations end up always kind of reducing down to the baby? And Pretty you much. can't talk about anything like life issues or anything outside? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just another sacrifice, I guess, in that time too, Sorry, right? Sorry, honey. Yeah. <laughs> it's like freaking the technician now, like, wow. But that's, again, this is it. A little right baby here. running away, doing things that you don't want them to do. How do you deal with that in life? How do you, how do you, yeah, how do you cope? Sometimes people get mad. Yeah. What, I understand that too, because, and, and it's, I, I really challenge it, that as well. Yeah. Um, w when to pull him back or rein him in isn't always apparent to me. Right. Until the situation has already happened. And then it's like, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't let that happen again. Well, see, then it's a learning curve for you too yes. every day. 
these new challenges are something that we are growing from, right? Yes. And I still want to go back to that whole concept of the play that was created for during the French Festival. I think it's brilliant that moms like you um, got together to do something creative with the concept and physically with the baby. I mean, how cool is that to do art and, and, and have them? Yes. Don't you think more people should do that? Yeah, maybe so. It, like, it would be fun to have something like the mommy monologues and have a whole lot of monologues oh, that, yeah. are, that highlight the challenges and the, the um. Wasn't there a scene when somebody was breastfeeding or it was basically squirting breast milk to the audience? That's what I heard. Uh, if, something I, like that. I, there was there was a whole dance that was about pumping yeah, breast milk and right. but then that might have been the one about breastfeeding in public and and having people <gasps> oh my right. goodness how do you feel about that well i know it's legal to breastfeed anywhere that's public well, there are times when i feel more comfortable and less comfortable yeah for sure yeah so somebody's getting a little antsy here so maybe it's time to wrap up um well so uh with this again you know attention spans for everybody is very challenged when you have kids and they appreciate you bringing <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't have anything else to, well don't throw that car okay um do you have any words of wisdom based on your challenge situation and respect to moms like you who have to juggle um a child and have a thought for yourself and being involved with things that are that bring you enjoyment what are some thoughts on how you can still find room to do things like that schedule it like it's actually important and like you, anything that is truly important to you you, you you schedule it and then you do it and you have to make yourself important enough to do that for yourself because you don't want to get down to empty because mm -hmm. other people depend on you i think that's a really cool little but big thing you just said because if you don't feel important in yourself that reflects yes and the babies will feel that good point yeah absolutely yeah or for him he's a boy and if i don't feel important in myself he'll end up i don't know probably dating girls who don't feel important great point like, yeah, yes or treating them like wow very important. good point and that's a perpetual thing mm -hmm. it's a vibe sometimes you can't translate those feelings it's just like wow so I'm, I'm glad we had these conversations as distracted as he was. You're a good kid. High five. No, no, okay. no, no, no. All right. So don't take no for an answer, but be a great mother. Enjoy your mothers. And thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this. Thank you. Thank you.